Hi, I'm Claudine and welcome to Rabo TV, a new series designed to ignite fresh thinking in the food and agri space. Today I'm joined by Ben. Hi Claudine, I'll be providing an update on the markets. And Dennis? I'll be presenting the Agri Chart of the Week and there's some positive news to share. First, I'm excited to be speaking to Bega Cheese Executive Chairman Barry Irvin. Under Barry's leadership, Bega has grown from a small regionally based dairy business to a $3 billion ASX listed company. A sixth generation dairy farmer, Barry understands the issues affecting the Australian dairy industry and the investments required to meet changing consumer demand. Hello, Barry. Oh, hello. <laughs> Firstly, thanks for bringing our iconic Vegemite home and congratulations on Bega's recent acquisition of Lion Dairy and Drinks. What does this mean for Bega and the Australian dairy industry? Look, we're very excited about the acquisition. I think for Bega, it really sees us become a more complete dairy company. We've obviously been famous for, for cheese and longer shelf life products like milk powders and infant formulas and, and products such as that. Um, this allows us to enter fresh dairy, so yogurt, white milk, flavoured milks. Um, so, so we're now touching our customers every day in, in, in virtually every channel across the, across the entire country. So very exciting expansion for bigger cheese. I think for the Australian dairy industry, it means that we've got a very strong company that can value add milk um, across a multitude of products and sell it in a multitude of markets, both in Australia and internationally. So it, it really means a further strengthening of the industry, which I think is also great for the industry. As Bega currently sources milk from suppliers around southern New South Wales and throughout northern and southwest Victoria, what will this expansion mean for dairy farmers in the rest of the country? Well, we'll now source milk from virtually every farmer in virtually every state, or, or sorry, from farmers in every state. Um, and I think that um, uh, obviously that will mean some change for us. Um, but, but the truth is that, again, I think, you know, we, this acquisition has been welcomed by most of the dairy farmers that I've been in touch with across all the states as they sort of see that an Australian-owned company with, um, with a deep history in dairy and indeed the cooperative movement will now be responsible for procuring their milk. So, so I would hope that we continue to grow the business and, and I would hope that our farmers grow along with us. Bega really is an inspiring story, from local cooperative to now working with farmers across Australia. So tell me, Barry, you've been passionate about sustainability for many years. Can you share with us the initiatives you're most proud of? Look, for me, I guess it does start on the farm. In the end, I'm a sixth generation farmer. So I've been uh, delighted when, when we introduced and it'd be, it'd be probably close to 15 years ago now, uh, biggest environmental management systems for farms. And that meant that, you know, we went on farms and worked with farmers to come up with a program that saw them, you know, monitor everything they do from resource use to wetlands to, to, to laneways to effluent management right through to animal health uh, and indeed even staff safety and that program you know was a was a great success at first in bigger and then expanded uh, across our entire supply base so I'm very, very proud of that I'm of course from a company point of view, very proud of all the work we do in, in recycling and in, and in uh, diversity and inclusion and all those other programs as well. But I think, you know, I really think across the entire supply chain, um, looking to the future, I'm, I'm, I'm very excited about the, the pilot programs we're launching in bigger or about to launch in bigger around the circular economy, which I think will be really important for the future. Well, upcycling certainly is the new black. I'm excited to hear how you'll repurpose waste across the entire bigger Valley. With all these great initiatives, what can consumers expect from Bega? Are we likely to see any new products this year? I think look, we're, we're always thinking about new products. And I think one of the things that's um, been really important to us is to have that new product pipeline constantly constantly emerging and you see that in our foods business a bit around you know the simply nuts product that we launched a year or so ago or indeed the honey product we launched last year uh we've actually just in you know you would think that there would not be much more you could do with vegemite but we've launched vegemite squeezy which is a much more convenient pack what we're what we're seeing from our customers is they want more convenience uh they they, 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 they want something that they can use simply um and and they want it to be as natural as possible and they want to understand 
uh, where it comes from and how it's made. So I think, you know, we'll constantly be looking at launching those sorts of new products around, around what our customers are looking for, which, as I said, that, that sort of natural, um, uh, good, highly nutritious product that is good for you in a, in a, in a convenient pack, I think, is what, is what most of our customers want. I'm really enjoying the Vegemite Squeezy, and I've loved seeing Ash Barty branded in the Vegemite at the Australian Open. Thank you so much for your time and for talking to us today. Delighted to be here. Ravo's supported us for a very long time, so delighted to, 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 to support this initiative. Thanks, Barry. Well, the share price is certainly reflecting the market's confidence in Vega's strategy, Claudine. That's a great segue to the market's wrap up. What's happening this week, Ben? Well, the talk of the markets this week has really been bonds, uh, following sharp sell-offs towards the end of last week. Traders are worried that as vaccines are rolled out across the world and countries come out of lockdown, a wave of pent-up economic demand will cause a boom that may ultimately lead to a spike in inflation. This is happening at the same time as negotiations in the United States for a further $1.9 trillion stimulus bill, on top of the $3 trillion in stimulus passed in 2020. The US Central Bank has also declared that they are willing to let the economy run hot for a period of time to ensure the durability of the economic recovery from the COVID-19 crisis. Both of those measures would add fuel to any inflationary fire. As a result, bond traders are now betting that interest rates will need to be raised sooner than previously expected. And we're seeing that reflected in the borrowing costs of the Australian government, which have doubled in just a few months. This could ultimately lead to higher borrowing costs for businesses down the track if the recent trend continues. Well, it's certainly volatile times at the moment, Ben. What's happening with the Australian dollar? Good question, Claudine. The dollar has also had a torrid time lately. The currency has been rallying strongly throughout January and February as commodity prices rise and higher bond yields entice foreign capital into Australia. The Aussie hit a post-COVID high of more than 80 US cents last Thursday before dropping sharply at the end of the week to sit just above 77 US cents. A strong dollar is great news for Australian businesses looking to import equipment from overseas, but bad news for exporters who are receiving fewer dollars for the products that they sell into foreign markets. Fortunately, the negative effects of the strong Australian dollar have been significantly offset by the strong international prices that we are seeing for grains, cotton and dairy exports. And that's finance. Thanks, Ben. What are your personal thoughts on this? Well, at the moment, I've, I've certainly been taking advantage of the strong dollar to pick up some things online. And I think it's a good time for farmers to look at some equipment purchases as well. Well, that's a great tip. Now we cross over to Dennis for the Agri Chart of the Week. Thanks, Claudine. 2021 has started on a very optimistic note for Australian agriculture. The Rabo Rural Commodity Index shows that local prices have at a broad level never been higher as we push into March. The record index value we see for this time of year is a remarkable situation to find ourselves in, given that we're just emerging from the worst health and economic crisis since World War II, and grain silos are bursting with bumper crops that have just been harvested. Chinese bans and tariffs have been placed on various Australian commodities, and the Aussie dollar is rising, all of which would typically exert substantial downward pressure on prices. Not only is the index high, but an unusually large number of commodities are doing well. With the exclusion of wool and barley, prices of all commodities in the index are above their five-year average, while cattle prices are even at record levels. So how do we explain all this market buoyancy? Well, there have been a couple of larger macro reasons. Firstly, unprecedented government stimulus has given consumers increased disposable income in 2021, which has kept demand up. Secondly, expectations of further demand improvement through vaccine implementation and economic recovery. Lastly, we have seen weather-induced supply issues around the world. These things tighten the global market for commodities. And then we had a second round of factors kick in to exacerbate the rally. Firstly, government intervention through export taxes and stock building by key importers. And secondly, speculative fund activity together with local livestock rebuilding. This created an environment of high prices, and this is a welcome environment for local producers, together with better seasonal conditions setting up for a broadly profitable 2020-21 season. We do expect some softening in prices as we progress through the calendar year. The case for which are outlined in our recently released report on the outlook for AusAg in 2021. And while commodities are strong, Australia's regional housing market is also booming, 
with prices jumping 7.9% in 2020, more than four times the 1.7% growth rate recorded across the combined capital city regions. That's really positive, Dennis. How would you summarize it? It's a double whammy, clear skies for the majority of commodities and a surge in property prices, creating a real lift in confidence across the regions. Next week, we take a look at fertilizer price trends and what this could mean for your bottom line. Back to you, Claudine. Thanks, Dennis. Ag has certainly kicked off with a bumper year. Yes, it has. And for Aussies looking for a tree change, you better get in quick. Gee, that's a great point. I could really use some country hair myself. That would be great. And on that note, thanks for joining us for the first episode of Rabo TV. Tune in next week as we take a look at the huge efficiencies being made in farm water use and nutrient distribution. Follow us on social media for all the updates. Thanks again and see you next week. <laughs>